All right, let's get started. Cool. Okay. I'll, I'll give a quick intro. So we're going to do like a mock invention disclosure meeting. Um, Sean's going to play the role of an inventor. I'm going to play the role of, uh, you know, a typical patent attorney, patent agent. Um, and so uh, we're going to use Patent Pal along with ChatGPT, uh, two, tool, two tools that deal with generating patent applications automatically. Uh, we're going to invent something on the fly and see how far we can get with putting together the best provisional patent possible on, in under 30 minutes. Um, and so, yeah, some quick disclaimers. None of this is legal advice. Uh, this is not a substitute for using the expertise of a patent attorney. Um, so, you know, we highly recommend that whatever it is generated here is a productivity tool for either the inventor or the patent attorney is used at your own risk. Um, take the patent application generated, get it reviewed by a patent attorney. Um, all of this is for educational and experimental purposes. So with all of that aside, <laughs> we can dive right in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's get started with the invention. Shant, I think we talked about like this idea of a uh, paperless writing equipment, uh, like an electronic pen of some sort. Uh, do you want to give a brief summary? No, I think your audio is... Um... Oh, How about yeah, now? You're muted. Yeah, yeah okay, no, I can cool. hear you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, so this pen would basically be able to write on any surface whether you're, you know, writing on a desk or even writing in the air. And the nice thing about it is that, like, this gives you the ability to write anywhere you are. And then mm. the pen would connect to some type of software that recognizes what you're writing and in what language um, you're writing in. And you could see it displayed um, on on that software on that app while you're writing um Got it. so the the main benefit of this is that you know it doesn't require you to have an actual pen and then um you can write basically anywhere and then share that with anyone um, i see um, so I'm going to share my screen here and I'm going to kind of use ChatGPT live to generate an initial set of patent claims uh, just based on the disclosure you have given me thus far. Um, so this is the PatentPal website, patentpal.com. We'll see how that works in a second. Uh, currently, it's a tool mostly for professionals, for patent attorneys and patent agents. Um, but what we're experimenting with is whether it will be possible to potentially produce a product that inventors can use as an ideation tool in their own um, experiments that can produce interesting IP. Um, and so uh, I'm going to kind of reiterate what Sean just said with regards to his invention so that we can use ChatGPT to generate an initial set of patent claims. Okay, so uh, my invention is a um would you say like a electronic pen or like how would you describe it yeah i would say a uh, electronic pen that um can write on any surface is the way that i think about it yeah that can write on any surface um so it's um yeah so it, so it it's a device that's in the shape of a pen mm -hmm. um so it's uh, a user can use this pen to uh, write uh, even without uh, uh, any uh, paper. Uh, uh, the user can also just uh, use the pen to write in the air. Um, mm -hmm. So this is kind of like the way an inventor would typically describe their product or invention. Um, okay, so let's dive into a little bit more. I think first we'll just focus on talking about what the invention is, right? What is this thing? Uh, okay. And then we can talk about some of the peripherals like problem advantages and so on. Okay. Um, so do you want to kind of talk about um, like high level? So we, so we know what it is uh, at a high level, like what, um, you know, what is this, how would someone use this pen? Yeah. Yeah. Um... You could use this pen at any time when you want to like take notes or write a message or, you know, you're on a walk and you just want to start writing like um, 
on without even having your phone out you could just start writing like on your hand potentially so it's it's basically like a writing tool um and it it's able to track itself so it knows like yeah you're you're writing um this letter and um it knows that you're writing a sentence and if it notices any issues it'll suggest a sentence and store it within your notes that's connected to that like the app for that device okay i see so any Thing the user writes it's stored in a uh uh can be uh, can, can be stored directly in the pen or in a nearby device right mm -hmm. um okay so i like that so you can take it on the go take notes whenever uh, at any time um you don't even need any surface to write on um okay that's really cool um yeah I like this idea. When is this going to get built? <laughs> um, when okay, we have so... more AR tools available too, it'll be cool. Just right anywhere in the world. Yeah. And then yeah. like literally like right in the world and only people with the AR glasses will be able to see your messages. Nice. Um, so like uh... Uh, I'll give it a bit of headings and we can see how ChatGPT reacts to that. So like this will be like a brief description of the invention. Um, this will be like um, what uh, what is the purpose of the invention? Like these will be the kind of questions that an attorney might ask an inventor during like give a brief description. What is the purpose of the invention? And then, okay, so let's talk about what are the main components of the invention? Okay. Okay. Do you want to kind of dive into like what goes into this pen? What what you need with it? Yeah. Um, so there's multiple. There's a set of tools that you can get, but I would say the foundational tools are the pen itself and the app. So the pen has like a tracking device within it. So it recognizes like that you're writing a letter from any alphabet, you know, like, okay, I'm writing the sentence, uh, the dog is walking across the street and I'm writing that just by like mimicking whatever motions I would have made with a standard pen. Mm. Um, so within the pen, I guess like the unique thing is that it's like tracking itself it's seeing like what the user is writing. And then from there, it's transmitting that message to the app, which is kind of just like a note taking app um, and it stores it within there. So like each time it recognizes that you start writing with it, it starts a new session um, and within that app, if you open the app, you can see it writing there. Or if you have another tool that we're inventing, um, which are like the AR glasses connected to the pen, you would actually be able to visualize what you're writing in real time. Nice, okay. So the pen would have some kind of a, a wireless communications uh, device that can send the location data uh, location <laughs> location data to a nearby device, which can be a phone with an, an app for displaying the user's writing, uh, or it can be an AR device, uh, such as a, an AR headset or AR glasses for displaying the writing. Um, so I guess like, uh, the processor in the pen would um, convert the 3D location data uh, into a 2D projection um, that represents the user's writing. Uh, the 2D writing data can then be displayed um, uh, in uh, a nearby device. Yeah. Nice. A bit, um, 
Yeah, a bit uh, kind of back and forth, but um, I think like something like this could be cleaned up a bit more too. Okay. Um, but yeah, like I think that's pretty good for like the main components of the invention. Uh, let's dive into um, kind of the problem that this is solving. Um, so yeah, what problem is this solving? Yeah, um, I think the main problem that it solves for a user like me is like, I think of ideas all the time. And um, sometimes I like writing out the ideas because it helps me think. But if I don't have a notebook with me, I won't be able to write out the idea. Um, so even if I have my phone, sometimes just like being able to actually write is super helpful. Um, and, and as part of that, I can also draw with the tool, which makes it super cool. Um, so the problem that it's solving is I'm outside. I don't have a notebook or a piece of paper to write with. I can use this tool because I prefer to write. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, further having a tool in the shape of a pen feels intuitive and makes it easy for a user to write even while they're, they are walking outside. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, yeah, I, I know you like to run a lot. You like to be outdoors and uh, I can totally see why this would help you like think and exercise at the same time. Yeah, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, what well, that's the problem it's solving. Um, what are some of the solutions that came before? Uh, yeah, similar solutions that currently already exist. You mentioned like, I guess the status quo will be like, one solution is a phone uh, right. that a person can take out of their pocket and take notes using a touchpad keyboard. Uh, but this is tedious uh, to do, right? Yeah. Um, I, yeah. A another electronic solution is like, there are other electronic pens, but they yeah. require you to write on a specific surface. So it's almost like the surface is recognizing what you're writing rather than like the, the tip of the pen. Like a table or paper or a tablet yes. um, but this is restrictive uh, users don't want to carry a surface with them yes. uh, they just want to take the pen with them mm -hmm. okay um, yeah before in another video I did a quick experiment where we just had a one paragraph disclosure this one is interesting because we're giving it quite a lot more so I'm yeah. really curious to see how much this might improve the output um, save, save it just in case because i know there are like limits as well nice okay right? so like how many character limits uh, we can provide to chat gpt but yeah good good cool. point cool. um what are the advantages that are you unique to this invention yeah um I think not needing a surface is one advantage. Um, not needing to be in a, it's the, the pen itself is Wi-Fi enabled, but you could use it offline. Mm. So like, that's another advantage is like, you don't need to be in a specific setting. Like you could be outdoors, you could be in the woods. I don't know. It's just whenever an idea strikes, you're ready to write. Um, nice. uh, and then, yeah, like I, I think the, the pen itself is like a storage device, right? So it's, it's also storing the information. Then once you get to your laptop, then you could write again, then you could, um, sync it. And store, um, the thoughts, um, from the user and sync it with yeah. a laptop later okay i think that's pretty good that's a pretty decent disclosure i mean there's more things we can expand on but i think like this is not atypical of a you know a, a you know 
uh, invention disclosure, you know, it's somewhat on the shorter side there. I've definitely seen ones that are, you know, many pages long, but uh, I've definitely also seen disclosures that are just one page. So um, I think this is uh, representative enough. So we can go ahead and give this a try. Um, so I'm going to make a copy of this just in case locally. Um, so I'm going to wrap this uh, description of the invention we have here. Um, let's see if I can. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to give it a prompt header. So um, let's give it a persona. So you are the best patent attorney in the world. This kind of primes ChatGPT in the right kind of language space. Um, so let's have it write 20 claims to support uh, my invention that's dis described in the disclosure um, uh, document below, right? So let's say that. Nice. Okay. All right. Moment of truth. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wow. it's working. Oh, nice. Okay, so it's generating this. System claim eight. Okay, claim 11 starts on method. Yeah, I found ChatGPT, like, Generally speaking, it's able to write claims that are in pretty decent formats, like not atypical of what we find in the patent database. Um, but I find that um, every attempt can sometimes like generate different kinds of things, uh, yeah. different kinds of formats. So this one is interesting because it's written where there's no segmentation of the paragraphs. Everything is clumped together. Uh, so we may need to do some post-processing when we bring this over to Patent Pal. Um, okay. I'm going to try just regenerating it and we can see if it produces something a little bit different. Um, okay. And it's nice because it saves all of the results. Uh, so here, like it's a little bit of a different format. Mm. Interesting. This one even uses Roman numerals. So yeah, it's, I guess like some, like this is interesting because we provided with like a, much longer disclosure than just a one paragraph. So it seems to be like generating a di more diverse range of different types of claim formats. Yeah. Um, is it better? I think it's a better, <laughs> let's say it's better. <laughs> All right, so let's regenerate one more time and okay. see if we can get a, okay, this one is starting to look, I think a little bit more standard. Okay. Yeah, but it's still kind of keeping it as one long paragraph, but we can fix that in the end. Uh, so let's read claim one. So claim one, an electronic pin comprising a sensor to track the pin's location in three-dimensional space, a processor to process data collected by said sensor, a memory device to source said data, and a wireless communications device to transmit said data to a secondary device. That's pretty good. <laughs> nice. Yeah, what do you think, Sean? Yeah, That's I great. mean, it's it's really cool how, like, I mean, this gives it a template to like build off of. And I know the claims are the most important part of the patent. So it's yeah. exciting to like see this and generating 20 of them. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can certainly generate more too, but yeah. 20 is a good start. Yeah, um, yeah. the typical claim set has 20 claims. Um, so we're okay. just going to go with that. Um, yeah, as a patent attorney, I, like I would say like, I may like want to broaden some of these terms. Like, uh, it, you know, it, a pen is just one embodiment. Maybe I would say like a writing device or a writing utensil mm. or something. Um, so I may want to broaden some of these terms, but just for the purpose of a provisional patent application where the key thing is to disclose enough subject matter, um, I think like this, uh, this is not the worst provisional you can have. Um, so it's uh, it's often better than not filing a patent at all because you don't get the earlier priority date and you can always file a second provisional and you can always fix things or add new matter when you uh, convert it. But anything you add later is gonna have a later priority date. So that's the key thing to watch out for. Um, so when you're filing the provisional as much as you can, you wanna try to disclose as much subject matter as possible uh, so that you have more optionality when you try to think about how you wanna restructure your claims later. 
Um, so I may try to broaden some of these terms like a writing, a digital writing utensil. Um, yeah, but things like sensor, that's fine. Um, yeah, another thing is like um, maybe there's not enough context right now to explain why this is able to track a uh, pen's location in 3D space. That seems to be like mm. the key innovation here. Um, uh, but like, but we can also get into that when we expand on the specification. So we'll see that a little bit later. Okay. Um, but this is great. So we have 20 claims. Um, I'm just going to click on this copy button here. Uh, and let's go to Pan and Pal and generate an initial patent application draft. Okay, so Pan and Pal takes in a set of claims as the input. Um, so I pasted that here. That's actually formatted beautifully right there. Um, so I may actually go in and do some segmentation as well. Um, but actually, Pat and Pal does a decent job on first glance just being able to disambiguate uh, this structure. But typically, what I would do is like put each claim segment into its own paragraph. Um, because indentations do matter when you're writing claims in a patent application. Uh, but the effect is essentially the same. Um, okay, so a processor, a memory device, uh, a sensor. Yeah, so that's the first element there. Um, but that should still produce more or less the same kind of result. Uh, let's take a look at the method claim as well. Yeah, so usually for the method claims as well, so I would segment each step into its own paragraph. So tracking the position of the pen in 3D space, uh, processing the track position, converting the data to a 2D projection representing writing, storing the 2D projection in memory device, and finally transmitting the 2D projection to a secondary device. Nice. That's very good. Nice. Um, let's take a look at some of the dependent claim. I'm curious to see like what fallback provisions they came up with. Um, so it's adding another step here, displaying the 2D projection on the secondary device. That makes sense. That's logical. Um, the method of flaming, claim 11 for the comprising, synchronizing um, the stored 2D projection with a laptop or computer device, uh, the method of claim 11, wherein the tracking, processing, all these steps are performed while the user writes in the air. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, electronic writing system comprising an electronic pen um, capable of tracking its position in 3D and storing data, and then a secondary device. Okay, so that's the system. That's probably this thing here. Interesting. Um, the electronic writing system of claim 15, wherein the secondary device is capable of displaying the user's writing in real time. Um, uh, system of claim 15, wherein the secondary device is a smartphone, laptop, computer, or AR device. Okay, that's really nice. Electronic system of claim 15, wherein the pen can be attached to user's hand. Uh, the pen is operable offline, um, yes. synchronizes data. These are pretty decent dependent claims, I would say. Nice. Um, let's take a look at the first claim family here. Uh, sensor is capable of determining the position relative to arbitrary starting nice. point in real time. Yes. That's good. Converts the 3D location data to a 2D projection. Um, 2D projection is displayable on a secondary device. The device is a smartphone. The device is an AR device. Um, Okay, so stores the writing for later retrieval, uh, a hand attachment for securing said pen to the user's hand. Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. Um, operable offline for capturing. Okay, that's pretty good. So um, we're going to generate this again, and I should produce more or less the same results. Um, I think one thing we can do here is we can do, create another figure for an alternate embodiment if we chain some of these claims together. Um, so Pan and Pal's algorithm, if you just have one additional element in a dependent claim, it's not going to create a whole new figure. Uh, but if you chain them together where the chain of claims produces at least two new elements, it will produce a new figure. So I'm going to have 13 depend off of 12. Um, and that should add two new steps. So we're going to get a new flow chart here, actually. Um, yeah, with those two additional steps. So we have four figures, figure one for the pen figure two for the basic method claim, figure three for the additional steps in the dependent claims of the method claim. And then we have a system uh, figure here for the system claim on claim 15. Jack, can you show 
um, what was generated for the figures, like uh, go a little deeper into it. So like figure one. Hmm. Um, right. So figure one is corresponding to claim one. Um, okay. And it's showing the root concept of the electronic pin containing the four sub elements, the sensor, mm. the processor, the memory device, and then the wireless communications device. Okay. Um, okay. So one thing Pat and Pal can do is you can actually have it work with illustrations. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and upload some of these uh, illustrations I generated with Midjourney. Um, so actually, I should probably show an example of how to do that. Um, so we can write a prompt together. Um, do you want to try a prompt, Sean? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, a futuristic electronic pen. Oh, nice. Black and white vector line drawing of a futuristic electronic pen. Um, and yeah, so what else can we say? I mean, nice. The person walking outside and holding up the futuristic electronic pen. Okay, cool. Let's see what it does. Um, and uh, with one hand and holding a uh, phone uh, on their other hand. All right, let's try that. Okay, so while that's generating, that might take a little while. Um, I'm gonna go back to Pan and Pal and we can upload some of the images I previously generated. Um, so here's an example of a electronic pin, um, of a user with an electronic pin. Um, so here's a pin nice. with a sensor. Uh, so this is corresponding to the claim one. So um, fig, uh, so 100 is probably just the whole device. That's the pin. Um, and then we need a sensor. So I believe the sensor should just be like at the tip. Um, uh, or maybe it's here. I don't know. <laughs> um, mm, I think the tip because. Mm, right, yeah. the tip. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because the. Yeah, the way someone's yeah. holding it might impact. Right, that's probably where I should track the data. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's the, the sensor at the tip. This one, that's the processor. Uh, this one's the memory device. Um, and then finally we have a wireless communications device. Okay, that nice. looks plausible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a pen uh, and here we have a system diagram. So we can actually replace that with a user um yeah this guy here um so this is the system so that corresponds to the whole figure um and then 410 is the pin and then 420 is the uh what do you call it um a secondary device right in this case this is an ar headset Um, and so even with working with the illustrations, all of that corresponds to the same. <laughs> you're, you're smiling, Sean. Uh, <laughs> yeah, corresponds to the same language we generate in a detailed description, right? So Pat and Pal will generate a description of figure one, where it says like figure one describes as an electronic pen according to embodiments. In some embodiments, the pen may include a sensor to track the pen's location, a processor, all of that's now labeled. Right. Same with figure four, describes an electronic writing system, 400 according to embodiments. In some embodiments, the writing system may include an electronic pin, tracking the position, and then a secondary device for receiving the same data. Okay, so this we looks have great, a... by the way. I mean, <laughs> like it's already showing all of the elements of the pen being put yeah, together. We... So. It looks pretty legit. We got claims, we have figures, uh, we have flow charts for method claims. We have a whole detailed description, um, brief summary, abstract, brief description of the figures, detailed description of the figures. Um, so we can now just simply download this into Word and either Visio or PowerPoint for the figures. Um, and that's the start of our draft. So let's take a look nice. at PowerPoint, right? So that's what we just put together. Wow. The pin, the system, the flow charts, that all looks great. Um, and by the way, if you want to change up the order of some of these figures, you can. So let's say we want this to be figure three. Um, and let's say we want this to be figure two instead of figure five, right? So now it's in that order, figure one, figure two, uh, figure three, you know, and so on. But 
by default, it follows the order of the claims. Yeah. Uh, and that's all updated in the description too. But let's stick to our original order for now. Uh, okay, so that's here it is or initial drafts. Um, yeah, so, and then what we can do is we can take our claims um, and just expand on this draft here. So we claim, um, I'll zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. So here's our 20 claims at the very end. Um, okay. And bold this heading. Um, so now we want a background section for a patent. So um, background. So I'm not going to worry too much about formatting. That can all be done at the end. Right now, we're just going to focus on the substance. Um, so let's go to the chat GPT and we say, write the background section of a patent application to uh, for this invention. Right. Here we go. <laughs> nice. That's pretty good. So field of the invention, the present invention relates generally to electronic writing instruments. Nice. That's nice. probably the key term we yeah. want. Uh, and more <laughs> particularly to an electronic pen capable of tracking its location in 3D space. Okay. Uh, description of related art. Traditional writing instruments require physical medium such as paper or surface to which to write. Um, you know, for instance, smartphones and tablets often feature this application, which they allow a user to take handwriting notes using a stylus. This is a pretty good background. Thus, there's a need for an improved electronic writing device and system that can address these limitations, specifically a need to exist for electronic pen that allows a user to write or draw in the air. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Let's just copy this. <laughs> uh, and let's paste it right in there. Okay. Oh. That's pretty good. Um, all right, so let's unbold this, let's unbold that, okay. Okay, so now we have the field of dimension, the background of, and the related art, that's all done. Brief summary is done. Um, okay, so now um, there are some um, things we want to expand on for additional context. So uh, the key thing we mentioned earlier is about how to track the location uh, in three dimensional space. Uh, so we can ask ChatGPT to write five paragraphs describing one embodiment uh, for how the pen's sensor can track its location in 3D space. Um, and let's see what ChatGPT would say. Okay, in one embodiment, the electronic pen employs a combination of inertial measurement unit sensors, include accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers to track its location in 3D space. Uh, these sensors provide data regarding the pen's acceleration, rotation, and orientation in relation to the Earth's magnetic field, yeah. respectively. That's <laughs> here, <I'm having> <laughs> Sounds right, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just one embodiment. Uh, you know, there's five paragraphs, so let's put that in there. Um, so figure one is talking about uh, the pen. So we're going to put, uh, let's see, can I paste special? So I will copy it this way. Okay. Again, we'll worry about the formatting later. So that's one embodiment. Um, write, uh, write five paragraphs to describe a second embodiment of how the pen's sensor can track its location in 3D space. Um, and let's say an alternative embodiment, okay? Um, all right, so in an alternative embodiment, the electronic pen utilizes a combination of optical tracking and ultrasonic tracking to accurately identify its position in 3D space. This dual tracking mechanism allows for precise location tracking, capturing the user's handwriting or drawing movements with high fidelity, right? So it's coming up with all these embodiments uh, automatically on the fly. So that's pretty amazing. Okay, so we got that. Um, and then basically the idea is like, we can do that for every technical concept. So let's try that for another thing. Um, so we had uh, the pen 3D space, um, we talked about like secondary devices. Uh, maybe we can dive into that, right? Like what uh, what are the uh, right write five paragraphs to discuss uh, multiple embodiments of the secondary uh, device in this invention. 
Let's see if I understood this uh, requirement. In one embodiment, the secondary device for displaying the user's handwriting or drawings is a smartphone. In another embodiment, it's a tablet computer. In a third embodiment, it's a laptop or desktop computer. In another embodiment, the second device is an AR headset. Finally, an embodiment includes a standalone display unit designed specifically for use with an electronic pen. Um, okay, so I, as, you know, I, if I'm revising this, I will probably remove the word finally because we don't want to we don't want to limit the scope of what the secondary device could be. Yeah. Um, so these are the kind of issues that uh, a patent attorney user would probably watch out for. Uh, my add on is <laughs> okay. So let's copy that. Um, and then we were discussing the secondary device under figure four. So we can just paste the language right here. Um, so let's take a look at our draft. So we started with something that was about six pages. Now we're down to a uh, left with a draft that's nine pages. Um, and we've only expanded on some of these concepts. So if we continue to write additional subject matter, we end up with a provisional patent that's really high quality. So you have a set of claims that should be reviewed by an attorney. Uh, and then you have the core claim support that the patent pal tool generates to support all of the claims. Uh, and then you use ChatGPT to fill out the background and the additional descriptions of technical concepts to get the enabling context so that someone else with skill in this field can read this patent and reconstruct the invention. Um, so all that together is actually a really decent quality provisional, uh, especially for something you can do in under 30 minutes. Nice. Uh, what recommendations would you have here for an inventor who's going through this process? Like, okay, so we we generated these nine pages. Should the inventor go through and read the patent? Should they immediately go work with a patent attorney? What's what's like the next step after having done this? Yeah, um, I think the inventor should definitely, like it depends on the inventor's goals, right? So I know some inventors just want to get something patent pending and maybe they just want to file something really quickly. Um, even in those cases, it's still worthwhile to read everything and check everything. Uh, but I know many inventors do file patents on their own and they believe they have the expertise to do it. Uh, and in those cases, this is a tool that's meant to facilitate them and assist them, right? Again, use at your own risk, but many inventors do it without any software assistance at all. Uh, and this is a better alternative to that. Um, so it helps with inventors who want to file a patent application really quickly and get something patent pending. Um, it may be a founder of a startup who wants to move quickly, and this is one of the requirements, and they have like a million priorities other than this, so they want to get this done and keep building. Um, but typically, what I would recommend is the inventor should do a first pass review of this, make sure it's describing their technology really well, and do any cleanup and do any kind of additional embellishment as needed. Um, and then they can take this provisional patent as this initial draft and take this to their patent attorney. Um, and the patent attorney reaction to this will be like, you know, is this well-structured? Does this make sense? Does this fully capture the invention? Uh, and we'll do a review of that. And if they feel confident that this draft is something that they can work with and build on top of, this initial provisional application is going to save the patent attorney a ton of time. So their work shifts from like looking at a blank sheet of paper and starting completely from scratch to having a provisional patent that's already mostly there provided by their inventor that they can primarily focus on doing the review of it, making sure it's not limiting, not disparaging, uh, making sure it's framed in the right way, um, and then go on to continue expand upon the provisional application. So the, what this means is I'm expecting that this new workflow, this new process should improve the quality of provisional patents, should improve the quality of full utility non-provisional patents they convert later, um, and should allow the patent attorney to complete this work product more quickly uh, and with a higher level of confidence. What do you think, Sean? Do you think you will uh, patent this? <laughs> I mean, like, uh, this is the other question we had discussed before. So it's like, yeah. I mean, this is super exciting, like having the necessary elements of the patent. I guess one of the reasons why I would also think about going to the patent attorney is because I would be thinking, okay, I have this generated patent. Yeah. Now, um, should I file it? Like, is it likely to get accepted? 
by like the specific jurisdiction. So like in the US, USPTO, will it will this patent get accepted? Um, I think like that's my, it, it's cool. And like, we have the patent ready. Now the next question is like, okay, how much am I going to spend and how likely is it that I'll get the patent? And then that will influence my decision to file. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, different inventors have different familiarity with the patent system. Some inventors have filed 20 plus patents already. Um, so some of them already are familiar with how to write claims so they can just dive in to write their own claims. Uh, but for an inventor who has never filed a patent before, um, I certainly highly recommend approaching a patent attorney uh, then take this provisional with you uh, once you review it and you feel it describes your technology well. Uh, and then you can provide this to your patent attorney and they can do that review. Uh, but they will be able to answer a question on like the likelihood of getting it accepted. There's various competing interests to consider, right? So like depending on how broad the claims are, the broader the claims, the harder it is to get accepted, right? Because you're asking for a bigger chunk of the IP uh, and it's more likely that this IP will come into overlap with prior art that already exists. Um, but if you keep your claims narrower, you increase how likely you're going to get accepted, but the amount of IP you're claiming are going to be more narrow as well. Right. Yeah. Does this chat GPT give a recommendation on whether <laughs> this is a patentable idea? <laughs> I'm sure it can. <laughs> I mean, let, let's take or does a look. it hallucinate? <laughs> Just for the purpose of experimentation, we can try it. Uh, but, but you know, uh, you know, again, I think even ChatGPT will offer tons of disclaimers. Um, so let's ask: What is the likelihood that this patent will get accepted by the U.S. Patent Office? Um, so you know, ChatGPT doesn't have the latest data either, right? Um, so yeah. it's not going to be able to do a search on the prior art. It's just generating language in a predictive fashion. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a credible answer. <laughs> As an AI model, I cannot offer specific outcomes or predictions, but it depends on how new it is, how non-obvious it is, its utility, is there enough context to provide enablement, right? Those are the factors that would be relevant. Okay. Good job, chat today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, ultimately the approval of any given patent is up to the discretion of the USPTO's patent examiners and a patent attorney can provide the best guidance in this regard. Nice. That's right. Yeah, I guess to wrap this up, uh, you know, whenever working with AI, we should always end by thanking <laughs> the AI overlords. So <laughs> thank you for your help. <laughs> Just in case they take over one case. day. <laughs> cool. I think it's nice. happy. <laughs> nice. And thank you, Jack. Thanks for going through this like process step by step. I think it's really important for people to understand like yeah. what are the capabilities, but then also what are the limitations? Yeah, so. that's right. Um, yeah, thanks for going through this with me. I think I think this was a ton of fun. I think we invented yeah. something quite interesting. Cannot guarantee it will get accepted, uh, but this is definitely exciting times. Like the how good these new language models are. Uh, I think you know we can see now that it's very possible to get to sixty to eighty percent automation depending yes. on what the inventor's needs are. But it comes with limitations, and it still requires an expert patent attorney to provide that additional oversight. Nice. Awesome. <laughs>